Confiding in the child, number point number nine in the uh, 17 strategies to deal yes. with alienation. Yes. Uh, confiding in the child, you know, one parent is trying to act maliciously toward the other parent or, or whatever. But, you know, there are instances, and you kind of alluded to it, like in instances of divorce, where everybody knows that somebody's at fault. I guess my question that I struggle with is, do the children have a right to know what really the dynamics are? Because in a situation like you mentioned, the rejected parent gets unfairly targeted and gets pushed out of the child's life. Is it right for the children to be able to, to think that, you know what, dad did this and caused the breakdown of the marriage or mom did this and caused the breakdown of the marriage why, versus nobody really knows why the marriage broke up? Do, do you, are you following my question? Yes, and 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 I think that um, the answer to that has to do with how old the child is mm -hmm. first, because a, a very young child, um, the truth of why the marriage broke up would just be overwhelming. And, right. Um, and also, I think there needs to be a focus on on helping the child uh, get with the transition to two homes mm -hmm. Bef before they take on the psychological and emotional work of understanding why the relationship didn't work out. Mm -hmm. um, and both parents need to be able to say, um, this was my part. And that's very different than what happens in alienation. Mm -hmm. um, There's a point where children can uh, understand that marriages and relationships take a lot of work and mm -hmm. oftentimes go through really hard times where one person or both people are just not very happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that once they get to the age that they can understand, mom and dad really tried hard mom felt like she had tried as hard as she could um, and felt like uh, she couldn't fix it and so she decided to leave. I really wanted her to stay but she didn't feel like that was the right thing for her uh -huh. and so there's a way of talking about the dynamics and why and who decided to leave without necessarily telling the nitty-gritty, right. <laughs> right, and also having a moment where you're, you're teaching a life lesson to the child, which, right. which is relationships are about two people who have um, made a vow to each other, but also are independent beings who uh, at any point can decide this is not working for me. It doesn't mean they're a bad mom, it doesn't mean they're a bad dad, it just means that was that was their choice. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned a little bit about uh, Layla Miller and her book, The um, Primal Loss, The Now Adult Children of Divorce Speak Out. And, uh, and it kind of doesn't have the same uh, scientific rigorousness that Judith Wallerstein's study had on the unintended consequences of divorce, the 25-year study, I think. But, you know, the um, one of the things that um, really struck me in reading Layla's book is how many now adult children, maybe 15, 20, 25 years removed from their parents' divorce, to this day still struggle with it. That when the intact family was torn apart, um, you know, it tore apart their lives. You know, many of them that would say that, you know, they experienced an antisocial behavior, it basically almost ruined their lives. Well, here's why we're going to split up the family because we aren't our needs aren't being met or whatever, and yet the family, sociologically speaking, is to bring a father and mother together with each other and to provide that environment for a child to be reared up in. It should be an intact home. And I was, th thought it was very interesting as well when you talked about the children who sometimes will call a stepdad or a stepmom, either dad or mom, because they desire that intact family. Divorce, it still destroys families. And I wonder how that works out because I look at a lot of these issues like parental alienation and say that the best way to, to fix parental alienation is to never have it at the beginning. You know, situations where marriages get difficult, 
you start to work, how do you fix it? Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, I've got a disposable marriage and I can get somebody else and if that doesn't work, I'll get somebody else. And, and uh, can you talk a little bit about that dynamic on the children? And, uh, but maybe you can't, maybe that's too broad of a question. Well, it is a broad question, and it also has to do with how can we keep families together. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then, of course, I I have lots of questions about the people who were interviewed for the book you mentioned mm -hmm. in regards to how their parents managed the divorce, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just think that's key, that I'm not sure with the society the way it is and the divorce laws the way they are, that we can uh, stop people deciding to get, get divorced and perhaps we can put more prevention uh, out there for marriages uh, to stay together, to help marriages stay together. But, um, you know, it's been my experience that the trauma for the children, yes, does come from the loss of the intact family. Uh -huh. But how that's dealt with after it happens is key to how children feel about that 10 or 15 years later. Uh -huh. um, and so from my perspective and, this, and the specialization of my work being how do we help children once parents have decided this is what they want that's kind of where my mind goes. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So you're you're looking at it, the damage has already been done, basically. Yeah, well, I'm looking at a decision has been made. A decision has made, which... How do we protect yeah. our children yeah. in yeah. this decision? Yeah, sometimes we put Band-Aids on wounds that really need to be cleaned out and have much more intensive care given to them. Yes. And... Um, you know, mentioned that this shooting that took place in Florida the other day, um, one of the studies that I read, they talked about these mass shootings in schools. And in, I think, almost every instance, there was a broken family that preceded it, or there was a family that was not formed, or there was not a father in the house. Um, in the vast majority of, of cases, and we're talking about how do we stop these shootings, well, I would say build up the families, strengthen the families. I don't know if you have any comment on that or not, but... Well, in, in general, I, I agree with you, mm -hmm. you know, that childhood is, um, is precious mm -hmm. and important and that the adults that the children eventually become yeah. uh, are shaped and defined by the parents who raised them, yeah. uh, whether there is one or two, right. um, or whether there is an extended family member who takes over because parents have um, unfortunately died or are unable to take care of the right. child. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the quality of the, the childhood, um, which is part of the reason why I do the work I do. Right. Um, because uh, to, to uh, take away a child's freedom to love their attachment figures to love the parents that we are hardwired to love, uh -huh. to disrupt that and destroy that with, with lies, uh -huh. um, with false scenarios, uh, distorts the child's psychological and cognitive processes for a lifetime uh -huh. um, and is cruel at the very deepest uh, level of the child's soul. Um, and they enter into adulthood with these distorted perceptions and having to maintain the distorted perceptions of a once loving parent. Mm -hmm. And that to me is what causes the, um, the repeat of the pattern later on when they get married, the inability for the child to ever reach their full potential as an adult, the, the inability for the child to ever contribute to society in the most wonderful and unique way that they could right. had they been, had their psychology and their emotional development been more protected right. and not intruded on. Right. So you talked about um, the distorted perceptions and, you know, the repeat behaviors. How frequently do you see the repeat behaviors? Uh, 
Well, like I said, in every assessment that I do with parental alienation, mm -hmm. I can see the, the disrupted parent-child relationships in the parent's childhood. So you're saying almost 100%? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. That's very interesting.